Let's move it to a team that didn't add anybody over the weekend, but I haven't seen you since the draft. And I definitely want to get your take on the New England Patriots because of how much we don't know and how much there is, how much, I mean, there's nowhere to go but up when you pick three overall in the draft and you start over at quarterback. Let's start in the obvious place because we were talking about this before we started recording. I've been saying throughout the offseason that it makes perfect sense if the New England Patriots want to lean on Jacoby Brissett in the short term, he's obviously a guy that started a lot of games. He's started in New England before. If they don't want to throw Drake May into the fire, they don't have to. But you seem to think that that might not be the case. Do you think Drake May has a very legitimate shot to be a day one starter for the Pats? I'd go so far as I'd be surprised if he wasn't the day one, well, week one starter. Um, I think that you bring in a guy like Jacoby Brissett in free agency because you want a guy like Drake May to start over Jacoby Brissett. If they had wanted things to be more competitive in training camp, they would have signed like, I don't know, Gardner Minshew or someone who I think like gives you a legitimate shot to start and win games. Kobe Brissett is like steady Eddie. And I think he does a good job of making sure that things don't go off the track, uh, that things don't get cataclysmically bad. But I don't think that he really is going to be all that competitive in training camp. I think ultimately a guy like Drake may his physical tools, when you put them into an NFL system, it just becomes hard to hold that guy out of the starting lineup. Um, I saw it even with Mac Jones. Like I watched that quarterback competition between Mac Jones and Cam Newton and it played out. I think like, I think this one is going to play out where you, where you go in and you're like, ah, oh, they're going to really try and keep Mac Jones off the field is their narrative. And then ultimately when you put, you know, a, a young developmental guy who shows a lot of upside and then ultimately it's like, okay, well, we got a veteran. We know what he is and he's not as good as this younger guy. I think it's time to give the younger guy, you know, some play. And Peyton Manning said, you don't learn by, you don't learn how to play quarterback by watching from the sideline. And I think there's, there's this new wave. It disagrees with that because Aaron Rodgers, because Patrick Mahomes, because Jordan Love. I get that. I do think that ultimately, like Elliot Wolf, uh, who is not technically the GM yet in New England, but is probably going to be named the, the, the role the official title soon. Um, I think that that's, you take a guy at three, you put him in the starting lineup, even if it's Drake may, even if he probably should develop for a year, uh, you know, it might be safer to develop him for, for a year and off, off the bench. When you put Jacoby Brissett as that one obstacle between, you know, you and starting, I just can't see Drake may having an issue winning that quarterback competition. Uh, and, and maybe that's, over optimistic. I don't know. I don't think it's over optimistic. I think you make a great point where it's hard to let go of the old school mentality of like, don't send this guy out here to get killed on a bad team as a rookie. And I think there's merit to that. But if the Patriots draft hits as well as they hope it does, you know, they've, they've added talent at receiver. They added a talented young offensive lineman. If they feel good about the structure of their offense, then like you said, that the upside is just too tantalizing to ignore. And when you think about how much you can do with a quarterback on a rookie deal, I get it. If you just want to get that underway, I think I'm still trying to adjust my perception of the rest of this Patriots offense. Like can Drake may step in and be a guy from day one the way we saw from C.J. Stroud last year, which it's already unfair to make that comparison, but I think people are going to. Yeah, and I think the what they think in the building about their offense is that they're ready to compete. Elliot Wolf said it uh, this offseason. He thinks that their offensive pieces are underrated. Uh, I don't think I agree. I don't think you agree, but it's important to know how they view themselves because it's indicative of how they will proceed with their quarterback. If they think that they have the pieces in place to support a rookie quarterback, they're going to start their rookie quarterback and they're not going to be worried, worried about ruining him. Similarly, their whole draft plan was basically geared toward let's support Drake. They picked receivers that are going to help them target the deep and intermediate period places on the field. 
what's Drake May's strength? It's targeting the deep and intermediate spots on the field. So that's why they got Jalen Polk. That's why they got Javon Baker, because those guys are really nice compliments uh, to one another and to Drake Bay. The other picks that they took in the, I think, top four rounds is a guard and a guy they want to move from right to left tackle from Penn State. It's uh, uh, Caden Wallace. So th- this offense, I think, is still developing, but they're a bit bullish on their offense. At least that's what they say. And so I think they're ready to put Drake May into the offense. Like they're, they're, I don't think they'll have reservations. Like we think that they're going to get Drake May killed. I think they <laughs> think that they're ready to to get him into the lineup. I honestly hope that they're right because I want to watch Drake May, and I like I think Jalen Polk and Javon Baker are awesome. So I hope this goes according to plan for the Patriots. I just hope that they don't get Drake May killed. <laughs> 